Well, it's February 20th, 2024, and I appreciate you cruising by, dropping by for my daily devotions. We're going to look at Hebrews chapter 11, Psalm 10, uh, Matthew 10, excuse me, Psalm 50, and Joshua chapter 12. And, uh, you know, yesterday we read the 10th chapter of Hebrews, and verses 5 through 7 say this, Therefore, when Christ came into the world, when Messiah came into the world, okay? Sacrifice, and he quotes Psalm 40, verses 6 through 8. Sacrifice an offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. Who do, who do you prepare a body for? Prepared a body for Jesus to sacrifice. He didn't want a bunch of sacrificial lambs and, and uh, animals. He prepared a body for Jesus to sacrifice with burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. The old covenant offerings didn't do the trick. Then I said, this is Jesus talking to God the Father, okay? Then I said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, O God. God sent Jesus on a mission to do his will. What was it? To die as the sacrificial lamb to pay for our sin. And he pulled it off. He did it. And it it is done, and we are saved by the wonderful grace of Jesus. Wow. I am moved. I imagine you are too. Thank you, Jesus. Let's take a minute and pray. Father, speak to us today. Thank you so much for the wonderful grace of Jesus, for the blood of Christ who, was, who gave himself to save us from our sin. Thank you for that, Father. Thank you for the wonderful grace of Jesus. I pray that you'd speak to us today. Write new law in our heart, Father. Help us hear from you and be changed from the inside out by the power and the truth of your word. For we pray it in Jesus' name, amen. The 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. 13 chapters in Hebrews. We're sliding into the end here. Great, great book, great book. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed by God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks even though he's dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away and but for before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in, a, in, the, in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and, and Jacob, who were his heirs uh, with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith... Abraham, even though he was past age, in fact, he was 100 when his son was born, and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on, on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had the, oppor they would have had the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, and he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice he who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. And even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your descendant, that your offspring will be reckoned, Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did not receive, he did receive Isaac back from the death, from the dead, from death. Finally got it right. 
By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshiped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw that he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as Pharaoh's son, as, as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. And listen to this. This is what, a couple thousand years before Jesus came. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ, okay, as greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to the reward. I think that's about 3,400 years before Christ, if I'm not missing my guess. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood so that this, the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry ground. But when Egypt, the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. <laughs> By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to talk about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms and administered justice, gained what was promised, and who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weaknesses were turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released, so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, while still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were put to death by the sword, they went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in the deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. That is a powerful, powerful chapter. In fact, one of these days I'm going to do a whole series on faith on each one of the people mentioned there. It's just absolutely powerful. Matthew chapter 10. I have a whole bunch of one of these days things that I want to do. The Lord needs to keep me going until I'm about 100. You know, give me another 25 years, I'll get a bunch of those things done. Hebrews chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 10. Jesus, speaking about Jesus, he called the 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter the town of the, of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach the message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Do not take along any gold or silver or copper in your belts. Take no bag for the journey or extra tunic or sandals or staff, for the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search for someone worthy there and stay at his house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. I tell you the truth, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in the synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when these arrest you, but when they arrest you, 
Do not worry about what to say or how, or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. A man will hate you because of me. All men will hate you because of me. And he, he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A student is not above his teacher, nor is a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like the teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house had been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the, light, in, the, in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the rooftops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. And whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemy, enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives you a cup of cold water, to, if anyone gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. And then Psalm 50. I think tomorrow we hit Psalm 51. Obviously, if we hit Psalm 50, today makes sense, doesn't it? Psalm 51, that's tomorrow. And that's that psalm where um, David weeps and mourns over his sin with Bathsheba because he was confronted by Nathan the prophet. But today, a psalm of Asaph, Psalm 50. The mighty God, the mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him and around him a tempest rages. He summons the heavens above and the earth and he, that he may judge his people. Gather to me my consecrated ones who made the, a covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness for God himself is judge. He, hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God, your your God, I do not rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings, which are ever before me. I have no need of a bull from your stall or goats from your pens. For every animal in, of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains and all the creatures of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell, tell you. For the world is mine and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Sacrifice, thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and will honor you. But to the wicked, God, God says, what, have you, what right have you to recite my laws or take my covenant on your lips? You hate my instructions and cast my words behind you. When you see a thief, you join with him and throw in your lot with adulterers. You use your mouth for evil and harness your tongue to deceit. You speak continually against your brother and slander your own mother. These things you have done, and I keep silent. You thought I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you and accuse you to your face. Consider this, 
you who forgot God, or I will tear you to pieces with none to rescue. He who sacrifices thank offerings honors me, and he prepares the way so that I may show him the salvation of God. Wow. Joshua chapter 12. A little of the full counsel of God with Joshua chapter 12. He's going to list off a de a, the list of defeated kings, the kings he thumped. <laughs> These are the kings of the land whom the Israelites had defeated and whose territory they took over east of the Jordan from the Arnon Gorge to Mount Hermon, including all the eastern side of the Arabah. Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, he ruled from Arior to, on the rim of the Arnon Gorge, from the middle of the gorge to the Jabbok River, which is the border of the Ammonites. This included half of Gilead. He also ruled over the eastern Arabah, from the Sea of Kinnereth to the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, to Beth Jeshemoth, and then southward below the slopes of Pisgah, and the territory of Og, king of Bashan, one of the last of the Rephites, who reigned in Ashtaroth and Edri. He ruled over Mount Hermon, Salakah, all of, all of Bashan, to the border of the people of Geshur, and Maacah, half of Gilead, to the border of Sihon, king of Heshbon. Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the Israelites conquered them. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave their land to the Reubenites, the Gadites, the half-tribe of Manasseh, to be their possession. These are the kings of the land that Joshua and the Israelites conquered on the west side of the Jordan from Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon to Mount Halak, which rises uh, towards Sire, the land Joshua gave as an inheritance to the tribes of Israel according to their tribal divisions. The hill country, the western foothills, the Arabah, the mountain slopes, the desert, and the Negev, the lands of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. The king of Jericho won, the king of Ai near Bethel won, the king of Jerusalem won, the king of Hebron won, the king of Jarmuth won, the king of Lachish won, the king of Eglon won, the king of Gezer won, the king of Debir won, the king of Geder won, the king of Hormah won, the king of Ara Arad won, the king of Libna won, the king of Adullam won, the king of Makeda won, the king of Bethel won, the king of Tapua won, the king of Hefer won, the king of Aphek won, the king of Lasharon won, the king of Madon won, the king of Hazor won, the king of Shimron Meron won, the king of Aksaph won, the king of Tanakh won, the king of Megiddo won, the king of Kedesh won, the king of Joknim in Carmel won, the king of Dor in Naphath Dor won, the king of Goyim in Gilgal won, the king of Tirzah, 31 king, king, king of Tirzah won, 31 kings in all. Defeated all those kings. God is good. He spoke. He's spoken. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us today. I pray that we cut the whole counsel of God. And I pray that you'd change us from the inside out by the truth you wrote on our hearts today. Help us flesh it out and live it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. Thank you.